Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. The first series we'll be teaching in this month is the power to witness. Hallelujah. The power to witness. All right. So, um, the power to witness. This message is going to be very powerful because it's going to portray the things we're going to do for the rest of the year as a church and individually as a person. All right? So I'm trusting the Lord that by this message, a lot of people would become true disciples of Jesus. All right? And then they will make it a covenant practice, all right, to always witness. And the witness is going to be in two forms. The first would be the witness of Christ, all right? And when we talk about the witness of Christ, we're talking about the prophecies of Jesus. The teaching might be a little bit boring, but it's teaching, all right? So I'm not preaching. And if we get to that crescendo, I might just, hallelujah. So, um, the witness will be in two forms. The first, that you know the things that Christ has done. You understand the history, all right, of, of, of our faith. Do you get what I'm saying? You understand the, the prophecies of Christ. You understand the, the, uh, the manifestations of Christ. You understand the birth of Christ and you understand the life, the death, the resurrection, the ascension of Christ and the workings of Christ and the Holy Spirit after, all right, his earthly uh, ministry. Uh, because that kind of knowledge brings a conviction beyond every reasonable doubt. We are gradually tilting towards a world that questions a lot of things. Are you here? We are tilting to that world. Technical. I, I, I don't like what I'm hearing, so please help me a little bit. We are getting to that point in our world today. In fact, we've gotten there where a lot of things are being questioned. I, I tell you. If you happen to sit down beside an atheist, how will you be able to defend your faith? What do you know about your faith? Are you a Christian because they told you you are a Christian? Or are you a Christian because you understood what makes a Christian, what makes a believer? The conviction beyond logic, the convictions beyond doubt, that even if they put a gun to your head, you will still not deny the person of Jesus. Why? Because it is going to be madness for you to be able to deny such an enormous uh, thing that happened. It was not fiction. I tell people a lot of times that the Bible is not fiction. It's not a storybook. Amen. It's not a storybook. It's not, it's, not, um, it's not Nollywood or Hollywood. Everything you read in that word is real. It happened that our Lord and Savior walked two feet on the earth. It happened. That he walked on water. It happened. That he was born by a virgin bath. It happened. That he died on the cross. Yes, it happened. That he was raised on the third day for in victory. It happened. That he defeated death. He defeated grave. And he gave us eternal life. All right? He gave us what? eternal, which means a life that cannot perish. Heaven at first, he brought it to us. Not heaven at last. Even though that one too is there. Heaven at first, he brought it down. It's a conviction beyond doubt, beyond logic. Because questions are, you know, arising. How do you know that Christ? How do you know the Holy Ghost? The one you've not seen. How do you understand it? 
Of course, the journey of the, of, of, of the, of the believer is a journey of faith because the just has to live by what? By faith. Of those things you have not seen, but you have heard about it. And if you journey in law enough with God, you will see things. Are <laughs> you getting what I'm saying? So I, we're teaching this series so that you have a balanced. Because there are going to be two forms that you understand what Jesus really did on the cross. And then you can drive it down to your life. Ever since you gave your life to Christ, what were the events that took place in your life that showed you beyond doubt that God exists? Because many times in our worldly interaction, in our social interaction, we don't share these things. I tell you, see, if you understand what I'm about to teach you, I'm just going to introduce and I'm going to teach this series probably till February. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm just doing introduction. If you understand this thing, you, there's no way you will not flow in the power of God. They will think you are a magician. Are you, because people have problems, genuine ones. People have genuine questions that it might just be only you that can solve it. But we've kept quiet too much. As if we don't have any testimony, any witness at all. So people are going through stuff in their offices. I will never forget, I sat down with, with uh, a dear big sister of mine and we're talking and she said to me, said, I mean, she works in one of the, the top corporations in the world. When I say in the world, yes, in the world. So, you know those corporations where you can, uh, you have to be careful of your words. You can use some words loosely. All right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? That you can't use words loosely. In fact, when you are wishing them Merry Christmas, you don't have to, <laughs> don't put Jesus there. All right? So that HR will not say, somebody will not re report you to HR and tell you that you are, <laughs> you are, you are too religious. You know, a lot of things are going on. And she sits in that place as a believer. I'm not saying that you go to people's face and you're telling them what is not. But they are going to come to you. You might be the only one they could share their truth with. And you might be the only one with the witness. But if you don't know, if you don't know, you lead them into more destruction. Are you getting what I'm saying? So she said one day, said, there was a colleague of us that was going through a lot. I mean, this woman who is rich, these are colleagues, rich, she's, she's okay. Okay. But she has struggles, men troubles, in-law, family problems. She was aging, nothing was happening. And then she was sharing. He said, she, 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 showed me, she told me that at first, she didn't want to really start with, uh, you know, you know, <laughs> see, see, where you get with those organizations, Somebody cannot just tell you, tell you that, you know, all is well. The Lord will do something. You cannot just go direct. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I was listening to someone, someone yesterday, and he said something that was striking. In fact, it stuck immediately in my mind. He said, we know the narrative of, of, of wolves taking on a sheep's clothing. But we've not learned the narrative of the sheep taking on the wolf's clothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Which means when you arrive in the world, you cannot go direct. <laughs> All of you are looking at me blank this morning. We know the narrative of the wolf in the sheep's clothing. That's what we know now. But we don't know the other narrative of the sheep in the wolf's clothing. Because that's how you penetrate. How you guess what I'm saying? But that penetration will not be poor so that they will not convert you at the end of the day yes, if you don't understand the power to witness. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? That's why this message is... is, is that's why I'm, I'm going to take it as slow as possible. Because in a bit to convert, <laughs> you should not be converted because your, your convictions are not strong. You know, there's, there's, there's some places that you get with when they say some things and there are more people saying it, you start considering it. I mean, this thing is true. The kind of convictions I have when it comes to my faith, me against one million, it remains the same. Because it's not a popular opinion. It's not trendy sometimes. But I'm fine with that. Because beyond the things that we read, I've gone to the place where I've seen things. 
<laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? And I've done what? And I've seen things. And daily after day, day after day, the Lord keeps showing you that he is present. Yes. So if you don't understand the power to witness, Kai. <laughs> so she, she started talking to the lady. I said, you know, everything is going to be fine. You know, just take care. She didn't want to go direct at first. Then the lady kept on coming to her. You know, then he, the, the relationship got to the point where you are the only one I could talk to. How are you doing it? Are you getting what I'm saying? She has lived a life in a way that she might not use her mouth to witness. She has used her lifestyle in the office. Say, how are you doing it? You are married, you have kids. You have no business. Let's see. It's prayer. It's prayer. You say, ah, my mom is a strong Christian. Well, I don't believe in all of those things. You say, it's fine. You know, sometimes, you know, but can we pray together? You say, Maybe some other time. Okay. Then, because the problem will not stop. <laughs> There's a problem that arises in people's life that only God can take it away. Why are you getting what I'm saying? Then they got to a point and said, let us pray. And they prayed. And they continued to pray. Then she, she did not just... The God that was brought to her was not fables was not the religious God. He's a God of, I, the God you can develop a relationship with, one-on-one. -on -one. She encountered that God, not in religion, the spiritual depth of God. She found it, and that's how she got converted. My question is, what if this person also just knew God on the surface level? What if this person don't, does not understand the depth, the height, the width of what Christ did on the cross? What if you are still in doubt? Uh, so this Christianity of a thing, see, if I, some of you, if we take a poll now and ask you, you don't know if you are going to heaven. If they blow trumpet now, you don't know, you are not sure. Because you don't know what makes you. Like, you don't know the kind of transport that takes you to heaven. You don't know. And that's because you don't know the message of the cross. You, don't, you have not encountered the person of Jesus. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. By the time we get to the end of this message, I'm trusting God that every one of us will be able to stand as a witness. That you against the world, your, your, your words will not change. Jesus remains Lord. Yes. You know, sometimes some trouble comes, it's you against the world. Sometimes it's you against your family. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? And some of these, your family, they are believers too. They go to church. You know, you know, you don't know, say God, they take. They have used God, they take. God, they take. Led many people to, to a deep bear. God, they take. God, they take. Then they use words like, is it not God that gave this people wisdom to do the things they are doing? No, it's not God. It's the devil. They didn't collect it from God. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? See, things are happening in the world. Christians visit Abalist to receive a child and they bring the child to church for dedication. Are you playing? Do you... <laughs> Those ones are playing one leg. Then the child will grow up and will start misbehaving. Then you'll be wondering, is where you collected the child from now? Are you getting what I'm saying? No, there's something they say that the, the end justifies the means. Sometimes you have to consider the means too. All right? As believers, it's not just about the end though. If I take crooked ways now to arrive at the end, does that justify it? No! The pathways of God are the pathways of God. Regardless of the shortcut that the devil presents. Yeah, the God is to have child. Then they say, ah, you know, everything. The devil cannot, cannot create anything. Is that true? Yes. But well, you still went to collect. That one is a message for another day to solve. How the devil gets some things? 
You know, in the realm, the devil is is <laughs> in the spirit. Huh? You know, there are resources there. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't let me go into that. But just know that there are resources there. Didn't you see Daniel pray? They sent his answer. They hijacked the answer. <laughs> Imagine that Daniel didn't continue praying. The Lord said, the first day you prayed, we sent your answer. What if he stopped? The more he intensified the prayers, they said, okay, let's release Michael now. Because Michael is a warrior. They said, now, Gabriel is too gentle. No, no, I'm not gentle. <laughs> <coughs> and anyways, it's not because Gabriel is gentle anyways. Angels operate territorially. Do you understand what I'm saying? So sometimes, if it's not your territory, you won't. So that was why. Michael was a prince of that nation. So he's the only one authorized, all right, by God. Because you see, angels operate by order. It's only human beings that go out of order. The sons of Skiva. <laughs> In the name of Jesus that Paul preached, we cast you out. It's only human beings that behave like that. Angels, go and read Jude now. He said, Michael, when he came in contention with the devil over the body of Moses, he didn't use any rebellion accusation against the devil. He simply said, the Lord rebuked you. So he used the authority of God. He didn't say that, ah, me, Michael. Have you forgotten that Michael was one of the people that chased him out of heaven? Read Revelations now. He was, he was the warrior. The Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. They defeated him. He didn't say that, ah, I don't defeat you once now. <laughs> because when it comes to the matter of territory, God authorizes things to. Are you, do you get what I'm saying? Don't just jump out and say, hey, hey. <laughs> So then you want to keep praying. The effectual of prayer of the righteous man availed much. Availed much. Kept on praying. Then he had to deploy the prince himself. While he kept on fighting, he brought the good news to Daniel. Do you get what I'm saying? Because in that realm now, you have prayed. God sent answer. They hijacked the answer. You stop praying. You say, God did not answer. <laughs> the protocol of prayer is I don't stop until you get the answer. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, That's the protocol of prayer. So you pray today and say, oh, God, I thank you because I've received it by faith. Are you correct? Yes. But most of the time you are lying. <laughs> eh? Do you get what I'm saying? Most of the time you are doing what? You are lying because you didn't receive it. And you know what I'm saying? If they check your heart, you didn't receive it there. So how did you receive it by faith? You are quoting letters, letter. The spirit is not there. Say, well, because I've prayed once, then I believe I've received it. <laughs> no. There has to be a notion of victory on your inside. Before you jump out and say, I've received it. Ah. You know when people started happy new year? Some people are saying 2023. <laughs> because the season never changed. Amen. The Lord will help us. So in that realm that this guy is, <laughs> when you pray, God, give me a car. <laughs> God had you. Sent the car. Hmm? But you stop praying. You say, this one is an, is an unserious believer. <laughs> He's not serious. I jack it. <laughs> so they have resources in that realm. I pray God will give you understanding. So what now happens is that they have allocation, they have right to allocate those resources because the owner did not claim it. So when you visit a DBA, they look. How do you know that? Let me tell you something. How do you know that it's not everybody that visits the DBA that that thing works for? Do you know that? It's just that they, we don't hear the news of those ones. It's because at the time that one visited, resources don't finish. <laughs> So there's nothing the DBA can do. Eh? Wait, have you not? Ay. Because this thing will be like an Hollywood movie. That they go and they say, it is your situation. So nothing can be done. It's not because something can be done. It's because they've checked eh? the resources. What you are asking for is not there. It's not there. Because the devil has nothing to give. But of course, he can take because he's wise. He told Eve in the garden uh, because he wanted to steal their lease, their rights that God gave them. The CEO, I say CEO, C of O, all right, that God gave Adam to the head. 
to rule it and to dominate it. The devil was after it. So he said, what, will, what am I going to do? He saw the woman. Well, I don't know where the devil actually saw the woman. The woman was, was uh, been looking, maybe closer to that tree. We may. May the Lord help you guys. Where that you find it? Because how did you get close to that tree that the devil now said, as God said? Did you see? He didn't say that. He didn't come with. He just said, as God said. So, see, when you check it really, we are the one empower, empowering the devil. The devil is wise, so, but we are the one empowering him. All right? He's wise. And that's what he's using. That's why the apostle Paul says we are not ignorant of his devices because he knows they change. It's the same thing. So many times we are expecting something from God. He will come and meet you and say, as God said. Tell him what God has what said. Huh? And full stop. Because after I've got... See, see if, you are, if you are a true believer, the devil would have presented options to you. Yeah. God truly wants to bless you. You know what? You can do this thing. Huh? But that thing that he wants you to do is not God. Because the fact that he is good does not mean that he is God. Do you get what I'm saying? I've diverted from my message, so I want to go back there now. So I want to be sure that we're on the same page. Huh? We are giving what? Power to the devil. So he said, as God said, he said, my husband said this. Thing. I'm just painting the picture to you. When I saw the Bible, that's me, I used to paint it. That's why husband's here. Please, if God tells you anything, say it to your wife as God said it to you. Don't miss word though. <laughs> You get what I'm saying. Explain to them what they understand what you are saying. See, as God said, say if you really eat this thing, are you going to die? <laughs> Treat the woman, ate the fruit, nothing happened until he took the fruit to a dam. And he that met it and the real owner of the lease, they just check documents immediately. Even the court of heaven at, in, at that instance could not do anything. Because man gave it out. That's why, because God is, with God, see, just believe this thing. Nothing is impossible. With God. With the devil, there's something that is impossible. But with God. Because God knows the end. From the beginning. If, if a man lost it, he, will, he has to be a man that will get it back. So God became a man. Confused the devil totally. He became, as it happened before, God became a man to redeem man. <laughs> this God is just too much. Too much. Too much. Hallelujah. I'm saying if you know these things, nothing will shake your faith. Nothing. See, my disposition in everything is that I remain calm. See, and let me tell you something. Faith is not an emergency approach to solve situations. Hear this very well. In 2024, faith is not what? An emergency approach. Do you know what most of us do? You wait till the problem comes. See, let me tell you something. None of us here, if you've truly worked with God, can deny the fact that before anything happens, you have a premonition in your heart. There are nudges of the spirit that you ignore. It's either you ignore it or you are so, 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 so bad. You know, not bad, though, not B-A-D, but you are bad, like B-A-R-D, do you get? From hearing, your ears are heavy. Then when it now happens, you now say, Kaya! Who kaya! Who? See, all those prayers is anxiety. It's not faith. Bible says in Philippians, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for... The first thing before by prayers is to be what? Be anxious for what? For nothing. Because the prayer in anxiety is not the prayer in faith. So you start saying, Kabo! Kaga! Kagu! Aya! Uvia! Uvia! 
<laughs> the angels will just be laughing at This will tell you. It's going to take the mercy of God for intervention. Because if you continue like that, you have to continue many days until you arrive at faith. Do you, do you, do you get what I'm saying? Because when you get to faith, you, you see that it's not just by, ah, oh, no. When, it, when the doctor told me what was happening with my wife, I just, I just laughed. He said, let's with nah, 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 nah. I said, no. Not now, now, now. She said, you have done your own. Uh -huh. I also have a spirit telescope. Or what do they call that? Either microscope or telescope. Or eh? stethoscope. I have a spirit scope. I said, let me check. Eh? Every other scope bows to spirit scope. Eh? I said, let me check. When I checked, who see what I be by me? I was just walking around. In fact, they didn't know that I was the husband. Because they didn't even regard me. They were just, <laughs> nobody was even saying that. I just sat down. I was pressing for, what was I saying? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's too late to start saying, Kagwa, Uva, Ivivi, Ikanda. No, 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 no. It's too late. So when I say thank you, Jesus, I have a, a perception in my heart. And I said, angels of my calling, do this and do this and do that. I went to sit down. No panic. Zero what? Panic. That is the case of everyone that puts their trust in God. You will not fear when the heat comes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me just show you a scripture and maybe we'll close. I need to confirm the scripture first. Because this year there's no guest work. All right? And let me have an announcement for you. The things God will even do in your life, you cannot even guess it. You can't guess it. You know it's futility for you to start using logic against God. You say, God says he's going to bless me. How is he going to do it? Okay, I will start this business. So when I now start this business, you are just deceiving yourself. <laughs> the ways of God are fast finding out. All you need is that God is going to bless you. And that's final. Because God can use anything. God has a vast resources that can never be exhausted. So if one person says no, that's why God will not go to the stress of saying, this person will bless you. Because that person has a choice. <laughs> so if you go to that person, see, many years ago I was organizing a conference on campus. And I finished campus, so I'll go back and organize a conference. I, did, I think I did that for about three or four years. So one time I was praying, say, God, how are we going to survive this conference? God, I'll give me people's name. I said, this one, this one, speak to them. I spoke to one of them. He said, no. Did God lie? <laughs> no, God didn't lie. He has a choice. Yes, All right? But God knows that you have a choice. That's why God does not put all his eggs in your basket. He has vast resources. Yes, if you if you say so, so, God can meet somebody you don't know from anywhere on the street, just walking on his own, and God speaks to him. And he will not be able to sleep. That's who God is. <laughs> you know, the, I don't know who put this slang in my head. But... <laughs> I'm going to get it out. <laughs> I've not said this language, but I wanted to say it. Because the things God is going to do for you this year. Yeah, we are calculating it. You are just playing. You are playing. <coughs> All right, Jeremiah 17 and verse 8 and verse 7. Verse 7. Then I will go back to my note. Verse 7. Are you getting blessed at all? Yes, the Bible says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be 
like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its root by the river, and will not fear when what? The heat comes, but its leaves will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from what? From yielding fruit. Blessed is the man that does what? Put his trust in God. When the heat comes, he's not fearing. He's not fidgeting. Do you know why? His trust is in God. Rock solid is on God. Praise God. Power to witness. <laughs> because this year you will do a lot of that too. Let me tell you something. By the virtue of the things God will start to do in your life, it will attract many people to ask you questions. How are you doing these things? All right? Even though you share the secret of success with them, it's an avenue for you to also lead them to Christ. The Jesus you know, to show them the true light. Because some of them don't know. Hallelujah. Every Christ disciple have to witness. All right? Witness the power of God, the person of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. See, one of the reasons we didn't die immediately, we gave our life to Christ and go to heaven to be with him. Because if the goal is truly heaven, do you know that immediately you say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I receive you. What happened next? Pia! You just go. But that's not the goal. God has a purpose for you to serve. And one of that purpose is to stand as a witness. Are you getting what I'm saying? As a what? See, the Lord has to help us this year. Because this thing, eh, as I'm talking, it will be, a, God might be saying to someone that make this a covenant practice. This is what you need to start to do. Because Jesus was going to heaven. The only thing he said was, I've given you power. Power to do what? To witness. It is a power to receive wealth. Power to do anything. Power to do what? To witness. As you do that, that is when the, the venom of serpent does not have effect on you. That's when if you drink any deadly thing, it will not have any effect. And that's one of the reasons why he left us on the earth. To turn many also to the way of Christ. Securing a place for them in heaven. Hallelujah. John 15 and verse 26. Media, my screen is off. I don't know what's happening. I found Tashia versus Vidya Tosa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This year, we are going to move a lot in the spirit, though. All right? So be ready. Thank you, Lord. A lot of the ways to move. John 15. And let's do from verse 26. Bible says, But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth will proceed from the Father. He will testify of me. And you also will do what? You also will do what? Because you have what? So after the Holy Ghost does the witness inside of you, the next thing is that you also, outside of you, will become, you begin to do what? To witness. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about your experience. As a matter of fact, one of the things that makes evangelism very powerful is when you drive it down to your own personal experience. I'm telling you, it makes evangelism very effective. As you drive it down to your life experience, Kai, see, if you practice this thing, it's one of the ways to move in the prophetic. There are many ways to move in the prophetical. One of those ways is intercessions. All right? 
intercessions. You move in the prophet. Evangelism also. One time we went to evangelize. I was preaching the gospel to the person. I looked at the person. The Lord began to show me many things. This is what is happening. This is what is happening. This is what is happening. It's to the end that the Lord breaks that person. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm trying to avoid getting into one scripture because I'm not going to live there on time. Hallelujah. Let me tell you three levels of relationship that every disciple have to have. All right? Um, not just three levels of relationship. Let me, let me say it this way. That every Christ disciples have the privilege and the responsibility, all right, of these three relationships. And there are three different relationships. The first one is that, all right, as a disciple, we remain in Christ. Amen? The second one is that we love one another. And then the third one is that we witness the world. Everything is in John 15. And when I open this text up, very well, I will show us. The first one is that what? We remain where? Because if you don't remain in Christ, there's nothing to witness about. Amen? And if you don't love one another, it can pass with your witness. <laughs> because the one you are witnessing about is love. <laughs> I get what I'm saying? That's why when Jesus was going back to heaven, he summed up all the commandments in two. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with everything. Since the second is liking unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. So some of you, you go and change. You, are, you didn't love your neighbor at all. In fact, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Some of you here, that has neighbors who, all right? I think everybody will have a neighbor now. You might not be saying it's a compound, but maybe the next compound. At least say hello to them. So that the day God will say, go and preach the gospel, they will not, they will not lock their door. Do you get what I'm saying? Because sometimes they have asked for matches, and you, say, you told them that you don't borrow. I don't share head. I don't do this, I don't do that. If I went to Greece, you don't answer them. You're just driving. Bah! You know, it's, it's so funny in Lagos. That's not the kind of community I grew up. And I'm sure that some of us who didn't grow up in communities like that. But in this Lagos like this, nobody sends you. But as believers, try. Let me start from greeting. Greet everybody. Because sometimes you and your neighbor will be looking at yourself. I bought I bought as they are coming in. And you are waiting, who will greet first? <laughs> you are the believer. Be the bigger person. Huh? Greet first. You will not die. When you greet the person, check yourself. Did I die? I didn't die. Check your account balance. Did it take out money? It didn't take out money. Did, did I miss anything? Did I lose anything? Just greet. I, I, I'm sure you are aware of what I'm talking about. On the same streets, it's so bad that even, see, the community I grew up from, during the festive period, we share rice. They bring their rice, we give them back our own rice. In this Lagos, we are suspecting everybody. You say, ah, I don't, I take rice with us now. He has food poison. He says, it takes me to court. <laughs> Nothing like that communal sense. In fact, they will see your child <laughs> on the road and they'll say, <laughs> let's just be careful. Because this Lagos, <laughs> anything can happen. No. Be a believer that, that loves other people. Because it's going to help you when you start sharing with them the experience. In fact, they will, do you know that because of these love issues, the people that should come to you to share what they are going through so that they can receive deliverance, by your faith, they are not coming. Because they see you every Sunday, you carry back. Where are you going? You are going to church. But Monday through Friday, they know that. Is that bad? I was in the car with someone and somebody was calling me. He says, I know they are. I'm not identifying to these people. I said, What that would say? You know, 
they are having neighbor problems. I say, why does that one not concern you? Say they want to they want to take steps and bring police. In the same house, you are not ready to pack out. You want this police to threaten your neighbor. <laughs> Something will happen in your house and you are not around. They will not call you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You will spread your clothes on the on the ropes. Storm will carry everything like this. <laughs> they will not even call you to tell you. And when you get back home, you will look at it and say, you will not be able to ask also. That, what happened to my clothes? <laughs> you will not be able to ask. See, God has started dealing this thing with me by little things. Like walking past the ropes and their clothes is on the floor. And the Holy Spirit says, pick it up. You won't die. So when I say, come, can we talk? They give you a listening here. But you have cut the love out. The pastor now says, evangelize to your neighbor. <laughs> you know, only you will go home and say, ah, how am I going to do it? How am I going to Should I send it? You know, you not start behaving strangely. You see your neighbor in the morning and say good morning. He say, ah, it's, a, it's a new development. <laughs> you, you mean you can greet? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm saying every disciple, all right, have the privilege and the responsibility. Not just a privilege, it is also a responsibility. All right? That they remain in Christ, love one another, and be a witness to the world at large. Hallelujah. (laughs) And let me also say this, because from next week Sunday, then I will start breaking it down. We'll talk about the power aspect of witnessing. We'll talk about what is a witness. We'll talk about, all right, uh, who is a witness, and then we'll, we'll keep driving it that way. All right? But let me say this. I believe strongly, all right? Um, see, I know that strong convictions are bettered by encounters. Do you understand what I'm saying, church? If somebody is sleeping beside you, wave the person. You know, I gave you a caveat that this thing. As I'm teaching it, you might, you might want to fall asleep. So I'm saying strong convictions. Because let's, let's take for example now. Uh, just like Paul. Saul on his way to Damascus. You know. The Bible just says a great light just shone. Bah! And he says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Don't you know that it is hard to kick against the barbed wires? Paul immediately recognized God. You know that's a spectacular encounter. Do you get what I'm saying? There's nothing you can tell Paul that Christ is not real. There's nothing that you want to tell him. Encounters bet what? Strong convictions. But then, also witnessing. All right? Bet what? Strong convictions also. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? So if you are going home now, and they say that, uh, I can't even think of one example now. Give me one example now, church. Those strong encounters. Or maybe you were in your room, then you heard the voice. Victor, Victor, Victor. I don't know if the Lord talks like that anyways, but I'm sure he does not talk like that. (laughs) All right? Uh, Victor, Victor, Victor. My son, this is... Tomorrow, wake up, book a flight, go to Abuja. There's a man waiting. You know that you don't need to. You have that conviction that, ah! Because sometimes it's going to be the devil talking to you. That's why you must not only base your spiritual work based on spectacular things. Because the devil can use it against you. I mean, not seen people that they, 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 they had a dream. Their mother was chasing them, whereas the demon, then they woke up from the dream, started fighting their mothers. <laughs> because demon have, see, they are, they are masters at manipulating. So if you base your spiritual work with God, and you don't, you don't work with God by faith, and you, you are, you're looking for spectacular, you will run into trouble fast. In fact, the devil will, will, will trick you faster. 
Because everything, even if I hear a voice in my room and say, my son, my son, I will confirm it with the word. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? There has to be a witness in me first. But I'm just saying that encounters can bed strong convictions. Just somebody dies around you and you say the name of Jesus, the person comes back to life. There's nothing they can tell you. You know that the name of Jesus works. But I'm saying that the witness also of Jesus also bets strong convictions. Yes, it does. In fact, I told someone one time, the person was ah, anyone I just, any lady I just sit with like this is toast. See, there are problems. Hallelujah. See, if I meet any lady, I just want to ask them out. You know what I told the person after I was done praying with the person? I just start preaching the gospel. You need to have your, you, you need to be an unbeliever to preach the gospel and still ask somebody out with intentions to, to destroy their life. So I said, start preaching the gospel. Because I practiced it too. I hope you know that one of the tests every man of God must go through is a test of immorality. You have to, you will pass the test. Go and ask any minister of God, they will tell you. Do you know what I, what I do as I preach in the gospel? Because it's near impossible that I preach the gospel to you. I know that I'm a pastor. I will drag my feet before I will come and meet you and say, <laughs> meet me in one hotel. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? I'm not displaying the fact that some people do it though. Those ones, they have ironed their conscience. That's what the Bible said. They have had their conscience seared with a hot iron. All right? They are, see, they are, they came from us, but they are not from us again. They have gone. All right? So as I started preaching the gospel, in fact, somebody took me out many years ago. We sat down, and then we were talking. It was a group date, sort of, many years ago. So before we enter half of the conversation, I was already sharing the gospel. Not directly. The person now put and said, ah, are you a pastor? I said, yes, with my sister. <laughs> I'm a pastor. <laughs> that was the end of our... <laughs> that was the end of our conversation. <laughs> he said, this one, this one is not my candidate. And I'm not saying that you go and share it with just words of mouth. Too. Huh? I have a backing. Because some people, they are demonic. They are after you. In fact, when is it that you are sharing the gospel? You are their target. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Hi. See, one of the things I'm going to do you know, I told you that we're going to be having some specialized sections. I'll be sharing some deep secrets that I can't share on Sunday. Eh? How I walk and then people fear me. Ladies who that devil sent to bring me down, they were suddenly afraid. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm saying that as you continue to witness, see, it is not just the person that you are witnessing to that is being changed. You are developing a strong conviction. And that's what motivational speakers know. They tell you to do what? Face the mirror. Say it seven times every morning to feel good. I'm handsome. I'm this. I'm that. You are looking at me as if you do, you've not encountered some of these people before. Eh? Abina says, say affirmations. That's what they call it now. It's not, it's not motivations again. It's affirmation. Hallelujah. Answer me now. Of our word, go glory to God. You know, I'm this, I'm that. They say, say it seven times. There's a reason why they, they ask you to repeat it. Because it's power in repetition, actually. So as you begin to continually be a witness to the person, the workings of Christ and his spirit, it is changing the person you are discussing it with. But much more, it is establishing your convictions. Amen. Amen. Because you will start witnessing one day. After you have done it for a long while, you will tell the somebody that God can raise the dead. And right there before you, because you have said it, God will honor the word. Of course, you all know the scriptures. My word have I done what? Elevated above my name. 
And what do we use to witness? The word. I'm still going to break down witness, all right? We, we, we were, we're going to look at the legal aspect of it, of witnessing, all right? Because it's a testimony, all right? You know witness in courts now. So much more witnessing establishes strong convictions in you. The more you tell somebody about what Christ has done, the more you drive it down by your own experience. You know, let me, let me share this and maybe we'll, we'll close here because I don't want to... Okay, I'll say one more thing and then we'll close. But I hope you have gotten something. When my wife was in the hospital and they were saying a lot of things, you know doctors now, you know, in fact, one of you told me, <laughs> I didn't tell them I was a pastor. <laughs> Dr. told me, said, this thing is impossible. She now said, I'm not going to do. <laughs> but it's impossible. <laughs> you know what the devil immediately told me? Then the devil started bringing pictures of what happened also to me when they were giving back to me. Doctor said, oh, your baby is this. Yeah, sorry, the devil was saying, your baby is this. You remember your own case too. You were this, you were that, you were this, you were that, you were this. So you remember that when you were four years old, you had a potential. I don't know how the four-year-old, when I tell that story, he said, before I miss you, I'm ashamed. <laughs> when I tell that story, they, they now ask me a question. What are you thinking about? <laughs> because people, you know, people are so naive sometimes. They think that it is thought that causes that potential. Eh? Worry can only trigger it. It's not the cause. Eh? Go and ask doctors. It's a problem with your health. It's not that. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? They were asking, what are you thinking about? So they were playing pictures of everything. Do you know what I replied the devil with? The witness. I said, yes, all of these things happen. But this and this and this and this was the outcome of my situation. I said, this one too, we will not, we not be anything short of that. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the power of witnessing. I hope you're getting this thing. Are you getting it at all? Because if you are not, maybe I'm gonna have to. I will have to grind it, break it into powder, and bring it back. Huh? Because I had witnessed the healing power of God. I know beyond reasonable doubt what God can do. So when the devil told me lies by fact, I told him the word by truth. You get what I'm saying? Because the devil has facts. Information is now in the pocket. <laughs> the devil is all serious. You wake up and then you are, you are, you are energized with faith. You say, today I'm going to conquer the world. Money is going to enter my pocket. The devil will just be laughing and say, you. The devil is going to put money enter your pocket. You are owing. That money is all for you. Those are facts. Huh? Somebody that's not eating, that's saying that I'm filled. Food will come my way. Everything that's what you said yesterday, nothing happened. Though. The devil understands what? Facts. He has information. What you have is not just an information, it's the truth. It's not a truth, it's the truth. The truth! That's what you are. And it happens by the word. You are telling the devil, this is my reality. Regardless of whatever I feel. I might feel a type of way, but that is a fact. It is not the truth. Hallelujah. Let me say this. The reason why this message is important is because the church is not the ground for witnessing. Huh? It's a training ground. Where your witness is, is in the world. Start from Judea, go to Samaria, and to where? To the uttermost parts of the world. Because you have to understand this. So many people are, are coming to church and trying to shine their lights. That's wrong. Take your light outside there. Bring it here, let's service it. Let's dust it. But take it out and go and what? 
and one shine. Don't carry the Holy Ghost and then start behaving. You are the first person to fear. In your office, they say, hey, they are going to sack everybody. You are the first person in fearing. No single are you of faith at all. In fact, people are running away from you because you are bad news. Any person like this, say, ah, 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 I knew it. I knew it. I knew when I got this job, it was not going to last. And you come to church every day singing Cherubobo, Sharababa, Sharababa, Baraba. Tongue is good. I speak in tongues every day. <laughs> All right, but it must translate into power. Yes, sir. Don't don't come to church and say for me that they give you mic. Only you want to give testimony. You have sang three songs. Then in your house, devil comes. You don't remember any of the songs. No word, nothing. Don't be that kind of a believer. The world should be where you are shining your light, where you are witnessing. So we come to church like this to receive marching orders, to receive instructions, to receive knowledge and wisdom. Then we go out on a Monday morning and you are looking for the first person who will complain around you. That's what I do. When I was working 9 to 5 job, you know, I used to hate Mondays. But then I sat down and said, why, why do I even hate Monday? What did Monday do to me? Because I hate Mondays. When it's money like this, everybody's struggling. So I changed my perspective. How can the righteousness of God, the Christ Jesus, eat Monday? <laughs> How can the believer be lazy? When the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, it says, you sluggard, go and see the hands. Go and lay. See how the hands prepares. How should the believer fear when the Bible says, fear not? How? So every Monday morning when I get to work, I'm looking for the saddest person. Of course, you know I'm funny. But you don't believe. That's your problem. <coughs> maybe if I'm not preaching the gospel, maybe I would have passed for a comedian. So I'm looking for the saddest person in the office. Then I'll go and sit down with the person. I say, what is wrong with you? I say, ah, stress. I say, this works. I say, don't speak like that. What do you want? Coffee? I go and make coffee. Bring it to him. Drink this one first. Today is going to be what? A great day. That's the kind of believer you should be. Not that you are the one they are now consoling in the office. After you, can't you reason it out? On Sunday, you come to church and you lift up holy hands. You dance. When you see me dance, I dance as a winner man. Then on a Monday morning, you get to work and then your head is bowed. You say, ah, what happened? Ah, ah. You don't resume again. This work. This work. Forgetting that you were in church praying. Oh God! This work. Give me. Now you are getting to the office bowing your heads. Believers should be the happiest. Do you know why? Because our joy is not determined by situations. There's an inner working of the Holy Ghost that powers our joy. It has nothing to do on the external. With the external, with externalities. The car is there, we are joyful. The car is not there, we are joyful. So you should be the happiest person at your workplace. Remember, after you come to church, they tell you, with joy you draw out water, but you are the saddest person in the office. Then you don't know what God has done for you on the cross. You don't know where to derive your strength from. Monday morning, only you are afraid to go out. And then they say, oh, as you go on Monday morning, you lift up your toes and say, amen. Amen means what? So shall it what? Me. So it means you don't believe God, you don't believe his witness, you don't believe the pastor. The Bible says, believe the Lord thy God. So shall we be what? Establish. Believe also his prophet. So shall we what? Prosper. So it means you are saying amen. And then you get to the office. Hey, we don't start again. You join the trend. No agree. No agree. No agree. Ever since I had that word, I have been able, I'm green. The only thing I'm, I'm not green for, and I've not been green for it, is the devil. Me, I'm green, no? No green, no green, no green. The new car God just gave you, they have jammed it on the road because you didn't green. No green, no green. The new things, you spoil things like that now. Sometimes walking away is victory. Say no green, no, I'll be driving in Lagos. I say, wait, go. May you receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Take all the glory. As we go on Monday morning, Father, fill our heart with joy. 
in the name of Jesus. Grant us the wisdom, revelation by your word, even to be the fragrance of you as we diffuse it everywhere we get to. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Give a loud clap to the Lord.